this week you're going to be starting a new lab as well as finishing the other two labs and this one's um, oxygen and growth of bacteria that starts on page 117. Now um, we all know that we need oxygen to survive however not all organisms need oxygen and actually some would die in the presence of oxygen and some bacteria are that way. So what we're going to be looking at this week is um, oxygen requirements of certain microbes. Now if you look on page 117 they have some pictures and some ex explanations of the different types of um, oxygen requirements and basically these tubes right here that they're showing are called thioglycolate tubes and they're a particular type of media that's a reducing media where it takes the oxygen from the atmosphere and reduces it to a different molecule. If you remember I believe in chapter 5 it talks about oxidation reduction reactions Oxidation reactions mean that they break or liberate things. It doesn't mean oxygen, okay? Um, so in an oxidation reaction, you're releasing things like electrons and stuff like that. In a reduction reaction, you're reducing those, bringing them back into a molecule. So if I have oxygen floating around in the atmosphere and I reduce that, that means I pull it in and it's not out as oxygen anymore, okay? So in a reducing medium, it takes out the oxygen from the atmosphere, from the media, so that the bacteria that are anaerobic or um, microaerophiles or something like that that don't like oxygen, then they can grow in there and still survive. And then you'll notice when you look at your results that you're going to have growth at different levels and what that means. We'll talk about that a little bit next time. Um, but be aware of it right now. Now, so to grow oxygen... Um, anaerobic bacteria in a lab, you're going to use the thioglycolate media, but you're also going to use either an anaerobic jar or a candle jar. We don't have the actual anaerobic jar, we have a candle jar, okay, which is this right here. It's very, very um, high tech. It's a pickle jar with a candle in it. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, you're going to take, there's four different bacteria that everyone is going to use. Alkaligides fecalis, Clostridium spor sporangines, um, Enterococcus fecalis and E. coli, okay? And they're going to have different oxygen requirements, okay? Now you'll have for each group, and once again we're going to work in our eight groups like we did last time, and each group will need two plates and four tubes. What do I have those there for? Okay, and your cultures, all right? So you'll have two plates, four tubes that will be inoculated, and then you'll have four separate cultures, okay? So for the procedure, for the actual um, tubes themselves, basically you take the thioglycolate tube, um, label it with the name of the bacteria, the name of your group, or however you're labeling things, and you're going to inoculate your tube of thioglycolate with the bacteria. Now there's going to be four different bacteria in four separate tubes, so you put a different bacteria in each tube. It's pretty simple. Now the thioglycolate, when you receive it, you may notice that it has a pink tint to the top of it, that's an indicator of oxygen. So when you first get the media, there may be a little bit of oxygen in it. We can't, we can't completely keep it out. But as the bacteria are put into it and as they start growing, then the oxygen will start to be reduced, okay? So when you look at them the second time after they've been inoculated, you shouldn't see that pink color anymore because the oxygen has been reduced. Now when I go to do this, I'm gonna do the same procedure that I've always done. I'm wearing my goggles, I'm wearing my gloves, I'm flaming my, um, my, my loop, okay? And once again, now with this, we don't wanna shake it up too much. If you shake it up, you're gonna add oxygen bubbles, and then you're gonna to have to boil it to get the oxygen out. So we don't wanna to have to do that. And we wanna leave it open as little as possible, because the idea is to keep the oxygen out. So also it's a very good sterile technique to leave your lids on as long as possible. I do wanna point out that last week, I did see students opening the lids and talking and trying to figure out what they're doing and the lids are open for like five minutes, <laughs> okay? That's not good sterile technique. You want to take the lids off at the very last second right before you're ready to inoculate, okay? So I flame my loop, I wouldn't be talking and all that kind of stuff like I'm doing right now. Now I'm ready to do my inoculation. Like I've done before, I'm take off my lids, sterilize my tubes. Get my bacteria this time when you go from one to the next just put it in there don't sh don't jiggle it just put it down there for a second and pull it out you want to be as gentle as possible with 
methylglycolate media because you don't want to introduce more oxygen, okay, in the form of bubbles. And then we're going to sterilize our loop, okay? Now, you'll do that exact same procedure with the four different bacteria. So say I put E. coli in first, then I'm going to do clostridium next, okay, and so on and so on. Now, remember last time I told you with the screw top lids to keep them loose? Now we want them tight because we don't want any oxygen. So we're going to tighten them. I mean, you want to be able to open them again, but tighten them all the way, okay? So I'd put my bacteria, my four different cultures, into the four separate tubes. Now for your plates, what you're going to do is you're going to take, you have two plates. One plate is going to be anaerobic, and one plate is going to be aerobic. Each plate you're going to divide into four quadrants, and on one of them you'll write anaerobic, and one of them you'll write aerobic, and you'll write the name of your group. The other thing that you're going to write on the plate is the name of the bacteria. So let's say we have E. coli here, um, Clostridium here, and Alkaligenes, and so on and so on. The other thing I want you to notice that I'm doing is I'm labeling around the edges because the bacteria is going to grow in here, so you don't want to be labeling underneath the bacteria. So try to label as much as you can around the edges. So I have it in quadrants, and I have my four different um, spaces where the bacteria are going to go. I'm going to do the exact same thing with this plate, except that for this plate it'll be anaerobic, and this plate will be aerobic, without oxygen, with oxygen. Now I do want to warn you, we try our very best to get an anaerobic environment, but it's very hard to do. Now, with the plates, what you'll do is the same type of procedure, and, and I didn't show you this last time because I didn't know we'd be using plates last time, but same thing, you'll um, flame your loop, and as it's cooling off, and then you're going to get your culture, now we'd have four different cultures, okay? So I'm starting with whichever this one is, E. coli or something. And when I'm, my loop is cool, I'm going to dip down into it. Now this time I'm gonna go ahead and put my culture down because I need my other hand, okay? Now I'm gonna go into the quadrant that had E. coli in it, and I have my plate upside down with a lid on the bottom, okay? Then I'm just gonna lift the plate up and I'm going to go in a back and forth motion, just kind of filling that one quadrant, and then I'm going to close it, okay? Then I would be flaming my loop and the fly, okay? The next time, the next one, I flame my loop, I'm going to go into this next culture, dip down into it, go into the next quadrant, put it on there, okay? If you notice what I'm doing each time is I'm not doing this. This is what I don't want you to see you do. I don't want to see the plate sitting like this, and you put the lid like this, and then you're doing all your bacteria, and then you put one on, and then you put another one on, and so on. While this is sitting here like this, is it sterile anymore? No. It's gotten all the bacteria from the air, me talking, and everything. Students make this mistake all the time. They'll put both plates out, they'll go like this, and then they'll get their culture, and they'll go like this, and get their culture, and you know, they'll be doing the flaming and the loop and everything, but they'll, they're contaminating these as they're doing it, okay? So I want you to start out with them upside down. When you're, after you've flamed it, after you've gotten your culture, then you open it up, put it on, close it, okay? And then I'd flame my loop again. Now, um, with these, we have the aerobic and anaerobic. So the aerobic, you would put in the incubator like you did last week. The anaerobic you'll bring over to, you know where we have our cart, there's a table behind it. Just set it on that desk behind the cart and I'm going to put it in the jar. When I get all of them, I'll put them in the jar, I'll light the candle, the candle will burn off all the oxygen and then we'll have the best anaerobic. <laughs> um, <laughs> the candle's melted and there's leaves in it because I opened it up outside last time because it smells and I forgot and I left the jar outside. So that's why there's leaves in there. Um, you yeah, do be aware when you open the incubator after doing this anaerobic lab, whew, well, there's nothing like, like the smell of um, enterococcus or enteric bacteria um, when they've been incubating in the incubator. The other thing that I want to point out with plates that I didn't get a chance to tell you guys last time was when you put them in the incubator, put them upside down. So the auger side, not the lid, the auger side facing up. That is because as the bacteria um, grow, they start to put off moisture, water, and things. So when they do that, if you leave them like this, you get condensation on the top of the lid, and then all of a sudden you have water all over your bacteria, and not only is that going to mess up your experiment, because now you have 
um, the bacteria swimming from one to the next and it's going to spread and you won't know which is which. Also, when you go to open that up, you've got that liquid that possibly has bacteria all over it. Now you've gotten it all over your hands and all over your table. So it's really, really important every time you do plates, every time you do plates, to put them in the incubator upside down. Okay? So I think that's it that I need to tell you about the um, starting of the um, oxygen lab.